So the cost of cryopreservation is one of the biggest pet peeves that I and we have about how it's being done right now, right? Of course, there are different price ranges of uh, how much cryopreservation costs, but then again, um, no matter even if you choose one of the more affordable options, it is not affordable for some people, and that should not be the case, right? Cryopreservation should be purely a decision that someone makes based on if they want to do it or not want to do it. There should no one, no one should be not able to afford it or anything like that. So we are very much working on bringing the cost of cryopreservation down. And of course, this is not a topic that can be done within a couple of years. This is a long-term you know, pro process. But fundamentally, a lot of the parts of what makes cryopreservation so expensive right now is very much due to the fact that so few people currently choose to be cryopreserved, right? The teams are not fully, the medical teams are not fully, you know, utilized. They have a lot of downtime. The cryopreservation um, solutions are produced in very, very low volumes. And last but not least, the storage facilities are not really, you know, cannot really be built, built at scale. So they cannot be super big because, well, not that many people are cryopreserved. So all of these three points will go down and cost significant over the years. So it's very much imaginable that you know a few decades from now that the cost of a whole body high quality cryopreservation will go down to the you know mid five figure range and then over time even much lower than that so it's very much imaginable that in the future long term future though it will be in the 10000 euro or 10000 dollar range So when it comes to rewarming, uh, everything we, everything I say or we would say is all speculative because we don't know what uh, the technology will be then, but we can make some predictions based on the current information we have and the data we have. And the biggest problem we will face is ice crystal formation during rewarming when we are going from re uh, minus 196 and back up. And one of the ways uh, which we probably will deal with it is nano warming because most the biggest problem will be different cells warming up at different uh, temperatures and at different speeds. And the only way we could probably deal with it is nano warming. In a book called Crisis is Revival, which was uh, released not so long ago, they mentioned the use of nano robots to fix uh, microscopic uh, damages. So of course, that's very much in the realm of speculation. It's very difficult to say how the legal structure in a future society would work in principle and how it would see cryopreserved patients that now with new technology would be able to be revived. There are some examples where you could, where, where there's some amount of similarity. And that is when people are being lost at sea and then officially legally declared dead and then being basically brought back or being found and they're alive. Of course, this is not a thing that happens often, but it has happened in the past. And then they get a new passport and are basically, well, legally being legally alive again. So of course, this is uh, slightly different. But then again, I don't think there would be much problem in the future if a future society just decides to issue new passports or whatever the equivalent of that will be in the future and just have these people as legal citizens of future societies. So I don't think um, there will be much of a problem, but of course, how it works in detail, that's very much speculation. So currently the biggest problem we face when it comes to cryoprotectants is the toxicity. So we work around it by trying uh, different combinations and we mix different chemical components, which overall gives a good cumulative cryoprotective quality, but also reduces its toxicity. But over time, we will definitely need to try out new combinations or even find a specific single component uh, cryoprotective uh, agent. But for the time being, we have to work with a combination. So definitely not anytime soon. Of course, currently the amount of people who are being cryopreserved is in, you know, it's in the dozens per year, right? So it hasn't even reached a hundred people per year. So until anything becomes a mainstream medical procedure, this needs to be 
you know, much more widespread. More people would need to be cryopreserved to even remotely consider the mainstream anything procedure, much less so than the mainstream medical procedure. Of course, um, you can very much imagine that in the future, once more data is available, or even once the first, first person has been cryopreserved and brought back from cryopreservation, that significantly more orders of magnitude more people would decide to um, be cryopreserved at the end of their life. Because some diseases might not be curable at that point yet. So it's very much imaginable. So I would argue that in principle, it will probably become a mainstream medical procedure somewhere down the line or at some point of, down the line. But this is more, you know, in the many decades of years in the future and not anything that is, you know, easily to achieve even, you know, within the next years or next decades.